Welcome back. This is the second of the mini professional experience sessions, or mini PEs, brought to you by the STEM Equity Initiative. Once again, please take time to listen, learn, and experience the content provided. Reflect on it and discuss it with your colleagues. To get the most from each video, you may want to keep a pen and paper or a device nearby to record new information or make a note of items you want to revisit for further reflection. At the end of the video, a link to a reference page will be provided to support your discussions and learn more. As a brief reminder, our goal is to provide the best educational environment, not just for every student, but also for any student. We need to find a model that works not only for the academically successful, but also for the underrepresented, the unengaged, and the underperforming students. Our specific educational focus today for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, is career and technical education, or CTE. CTE is often misunderstood and or misrepresented in America's understanding today. Our historic understanding of the trades from which CTE has grown has left many Americans with old ideas. In fact, CTE is in many ways the engine of our economy and the area of the most employment growth and workforce demand today. Consider for a moment the workers most often on the front lines of the pandemic or responding to the natural disasters happening all around the country. Nurses, healthcare workers and technicians, firefighters, emergency medical technicians, police and safety officers, building trade workers and maintenance workers, manufacturing workers, truck drivers, bus drivers, and logistics broadly, food preparers, childcare and preschool workers, teachers and teaching assistants, automotive technicians, farmers and horticultural workers, engineers, bookkeepers, information technology hardware and software workers, website and social media designers and developers, HVAC workers, and more. Educators in CTE create the heroes that keep us safe, housed, and fed, and provide us with access to clean water, electricity, heat, and cooling. In the years ahead, the quality of our lives may be threatened due to strengthening natural disasters, the current and potential future pandemic, food shortages, extreme wildfires, cybersecurity attacks to our infrastructure, and more. In many ways, CTE workers are essential to our very survival. When referring to CTE programs even today, these important career pathways are often perceived as only appropriate for the few students that are not college-bound. Today, nothing could be further from the truth. As educators, you likely know all this. But we, as educators, parents, and community members, are failing to focus on educating and normalizing these important careers and their pathways, from entry level to corporate CEO. We must help others understand the diverse workforce needs that begin in CTE programs. From parents to politicians, we need to highlight MIT is just advanced CTE. How do we normalize CTE educational opportunities for any student, let alone those who have been traditionally underrepresented? You may recall in the first mini PE, the STEM Equity Initiative identified four overlapping indicators of an equitable learning environment that can actually be felt and experienced by everyone in a classroom. Those indicators are normalizing, empowering, inclusive, and relevant. Together, these four indicators create the acronym NEIR, or NEAR. The first indicator, normalizing, develops through the power of both family and cultural norms, which begin at birth. Can there be any doubt this child will go to Commonwealth University or an equivalent when she grows up? Examples of normalizing can be viewed in the video of Christina Perez, found in Mini PE1, and on the STEM Equity Initiative's website. 
From TV shows Christina has watched her whole life, to her father's career example, to her own experience at construction sites and building a bookshelf, construction has been normalized. These powerful influences infused throughout her life made Christina Perez feel comfortable working in carpentry and construction. Let's listen to another story. This time we will meet Javier Barrera and his family. As you listen, take notes on the many factors that normalized healthcare as a career pathway and helped him overcome cultural stereotypes to becoming a nurse. Please pause to reflect and discuss the following question. What experiences do you think had an influence on Javier's decision to become an EMT and then train to become a nurse? Javier's experience with his parents working in a hospital from an early age? Javier's example from his sister as a role model and mentor? Javier's experience watching EMTs rescue someone? Javier seeing Spanish-speaking role models caring for those in need? Javier's volunteering to translate Spanish into English for the healthcare workers to care for their clients. Javier's support from his family, friends, and teachers in the EMT program. Anything else? What factor almost derailed Javier from entering a healthcare profession while in school? Seeing his friend teased due to gender biases in the CTE healthcare program would certainly have an impact on Javier. Eric Erickson, the famous child psychologist, tells us that peers have a huge effect on decisions at a young age. Well-intentioned educators and advocates for years have tried to present underrepresented students as role models to recruit others. This can backfire if the underrepresented student is not willing or interested in standing out. Normalizing from an early age can be very powerful in overcoming cultural norms. Normalizing should not be confused with any singular idea of normal, but rather the process for developing or conditioning a person to lived experiences that are common, typical, customary, and or routine. Cultural norms can change even without intent or awareness. However, as practitioners, parents, community members, and policymakers, we have the ability to use normalizing as a tool. The theoretical model underpinning a normalizing school, classroom, or program experience is based on research related to a sense of belonging, which is predictive of students' retention and persistence in CTE, STEM broadly, and in college. Research and practice tells us that our culture can influence our beliefs about careers. We see this all the time in families that have multiple generations in one career area, such as the military, police officers, or healthcare professionals. Having a parent or a community make a career pathway feel normal or within cultural norms makes the career pathway easier to enter. Females self-report that having grown up on farms using machine equipment was an important influence for their decision to enroll in automotive technology programs. Males are more likely to enter cosmetology programs when they highlight the pathway to barbering programs and provide traditional masculine spaces, including barber chairs and or poles, sports magazines, and more neutral scents like wooded pine or citrus, rather than just floral scents. Historically, without a sense of comfort or familiarity, underrepresented students are left to adapt to the values and norms of the traditional students to fit in. There's that peer influence again. Recent research has advanced the idea that the institution or educator that can provide a more culturally compatible environment, also known as an equitable learning environment, will attract and retain a more diverse student population that are comfortable, safe, and can better learn. In the long term, educators need to consider the entire pathway of children's development and work with students, parents, and community members to better promote and normalize the importance and value of CTE education as an important STEM pathway for all students. This will be particularly important for students who may be underrepresented by gender or race 
in certain CTE programs. Because many of these career pathways have historically been defined by cultural biases in gender, overcoming these cultural biases may be more challenging and take time. But that does not mean we throw up our hands in defeat. Instead, we must work even harder to define and create the messages to overcome the biases and normalize these much needed career pathways for all, every, and any student and to meet our nation's critical workforce shortages. That means figuring out how to get students to enter CTE programs that may be non-traditional to them because of their gender. Need examples? Connect instruction to experiences in daily living in rural versus urban or suburban settings. Understand the community and family values required to communicate clearly and effectively. Learn about growth mindset and students' continuous re-examination for incremental change. When possible, provide role models, internships, work study, or apprenticeships to normalize STEM career options. Look for ways to ensure your program space is comfortable across gender, race, and ethnicity by involving people from those communities to honestly share their emotional reaction and experiences. Pause and reflect. Given cultural and family influences from an early age, what can you do to normalize CTE in your school or classroom, particularly for underrepresented students by gender, to increase comfort with non-traditional programs? Please pause and reflect further. What opportunities have you tried so far, and how did it go? What might your high school or college students develop to engage younger students during tours or through impactful videos? How can current students help normalize and educate potential secondary students and parents about your CTE programs? In two brief sessions, you have been introduced to the asset approach to education and the first of the four indicators that make up the foundation for creating an equitable learning environment. Over the next month, see if you can identify examples of normalizing in your community. Who are the students that feel comfortable entering your program? Who does not, and why not? Hint, it's not because they are male or female. Congratulations, you made it, well done. You took the dive, and it was deep. Remember, as an educator in any position, you influence the lives of children. You are the secret sauce. You hold the key to opening doors, imaginations, creativity, and more. How will you help parents, students, and your colleagues to see your STEM program as a great one for any student and critical for our world? Our next video will focus on the second near characteristic, empowering you and your students. Feeling empowered yet? You got this. You rock.